That is a very big number, almost a quarter of a million. It's the number of Dreamcasts that were sold in the first 24 hours of the system's launch in the United States. And that number standing alone is pretty damn impressive. But I wanted to frame it against some of the competition to see how well it stands up in the overall landscape of game console launches. And what I found out is that hell yeah, it does stand up. Let's check it out. Let's throw the Dreamcast up on this graphic and surround it with some of our best friends. Now I know the PlayStation 1 actually came out slightly after the Saturn, somewhat famously or infamously if you're a Sega fan, but I wanted to start there anyway. The legendary Sony system came out of the gates with 100,000 units sold, but took two days to do that. And you'll notice that while we have day one sales information for the Dreamcast, other systems will only have sales data from a general launch window that ranges in time from two days to two weeks. But at the end of this video, I'll make some efforts to normalize those numbers so that we can compare apples to apples. In retrospect, given what the PlayStation brand would become, this number is actually shockingly low. But back then, in 1995, it really was the Wild West, and it felt like the industry could go in any number of directions. Saturn, 3DO, Jaguar, PlayStation, no one had the clear edge. At least not at first. So how about the Saturn? It's tough to find solid numbers, but during their 1995 E3 presentation, Sega said that they shipped 30,000 units, to select retailers for sale immediately that day. I've read that demand far outstrips supply during the Saturn's launch, so for the sake of entertainment, let's assume that they sold all 30,000 that day. Next up, the Nintendo 64, which apparently sold 350,000 units, but took three days to achieve those sales. Now some could argue that the system would have sold through all of those units in one day, since retailers actually started selling the console three days earlier than the official launch date. The behemoth, the PlayStation 2, sold half a million units in one day, shattering anything that had come before it. And that was with hardware shortages, apparently. It could have been much higher. The GameCube sold a little over 300,000 units in one day, very impressive and very surprising to me because I don't recall all that much hype for the GameCube at the time. The Xbox 360 managed around the same level of sales as the GameCube, but took eight days to do it. These sales seem a little low to me, but I've read that like the PlayStation 2, this system was plagued by hardware shortages. And the PlayStation 3 famously stumbled out of the gates with about 200,000 consoles sold. Clearly far less than Sony's previous effort, but what isn't clear is how long it took to do that level of sales. The majority of sources say that it sold that amount in about two weeks on store shelves, making it an even more deflating number for Sony. The Wii came out hot and heavy with 600,000 units sold in eight days, and its younger brother, the Wii U, managed 400,000 units sold in one week. Now, in my humble opinion, all of this makes the Dreamcast look as if it had a very successful launch. And damn right it holds up. But it also makes another system look as though it had an absolutely massive launch. The PlayStation 4, with unit sales of 1 million on launch day in the USA, blowing everything else away. And what's interesting is that I remember reading at the time of the PlayStation 4's launch that some industry analysts were saying that consoles were essentially dead and that they were on their last legs. Well, if this is what last legs look like, I've sure as hell got a lot to learn. I did look for launch sales for the Xbox One, but I couldn't find USA exclusive numbers. But Microsoft does claim 1 million units sold worldwide on day one. And if we use the geographical distribution of Xbox 360 sales as a rough estimation, we could make an educated guess that Xbox One launch day sales in the USA may have been three, four, maybe 500,000 consoles sold. A very good number. Now I'm going to do something that might not have a ton of validity, but I think it's a fair way to take these multi-day sales numbers and estimate what actual single-day launch day sales might have been. In other words, let's try and level the playing field so that we're comparing apples to apples. And I'm going to do it like this. For every system on this graphic that has multi-day sales, I'm going to multiply that number by 0.6 which represents my rough estimate that launch day sales may have accounted for 60% of the total sales numbers you're seeing here. I think that's a fair estimate. Let's see what happens. 
So the bars in red are the new one-day sales estimates. Now we see some real shocking stuff in my opinion. The Dreamcast looks really amazing now, and the PlayStation 4 looks to be just on a complete other planet. But I have one huge takeaway from this graphic, and that is that the opening chapter of a system's life does not necessarily foretell the rest of the story. A great or a terrible launch does not mean anything more than just that. The PlayStation 3 and the Wii U are the polar examples of this. The PlayStation 3 launch numbers, sliced from any angle, look really bad. But that system went on to sell nearly 85 million consoles in the end. Just about as many as the Xbox 360. The Wii U, on the other hand, with a very successful launch, only managed to sell around 14 million consoles before everything was said and done. And please don't make me relive what happened to the Dreamcast. However, having said all of that, the PlayStation 4 looks to be the beneficiary of a spectacular launch, perhaps the best ever, and, as of the most recent news out of Sony, is at 76.5 million consoles sold and counting. Soon it will pass the PlayStation 3, with likely a lot left in the tank. I hope that you found this video interesting. Maybe it'll help you win an argument or two down the road. The format of my channel is that I release snapshot videos like this as often as I can, and I release more in-depth videos as I finish them. So please like and subscribe if you find this sort of thing interesting. And until next time, like always, all the best and the sky is the limit.